Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest entry in my Cryptids and Monsters video. In anticipation of the upcoming Hobbit sequel, The Desolation of Smog, I thought I would create a video dedicated to a cryptid that may actually have been, if not the inspiration for Smog, at least a very very close uh, acknowledgement as to uh, there could have been actually a real life Smog that happened uh, here in Earth, and the reason for this has to do with a legend known as the Wawel Dragon. W A W E L, the Wawel Dragon. This was a dragon that, much like Smog, terrorized the city that it was in, and it only took finally the actions of one brave person to defeat uh, this dragon and eventually become king. Now that last part is more of a sensationalistic tale, more like a fairy tale type of things. But at least with regards to the legend, the very interesting part is that where this dragon was defeated is actually where the city was built. So if one considers that, then we could have a real life dragon, its bones essentially resting somewhere underneath um, the city on there and all it takes is one discovery to find out whether those bones are truly there or who knows this dragon may not have actually been defeated and it's just entombed and could come out any day uh, right like a real life movie Reign of Fire uh, where dragons are released very very cool stuff anyways the story of the Wildwell dragon by earliest account, it happened back in the 12th century, so hundreds of years back. Uh, this is how far back the story goes. And this took place in what used to be the capital of Poland. And the story goes that this was a dragon that, again, much like Smog, completely terrorized the town that it was at. It would constantly kill cattle, kill people, either for food or just for fun. Uh, much like a predator, it would just hunt and kill and completely make the people there fear for their lives. They were so afraid to leave their homes and because of this, the area around it got so bad because how, you know, how could work be done? How could harvesting be done? How could anything be done if the minute they stepped out, they could have this dragon swoop down and all of a sudden take them, take their family away? everything and this was a classic dragon according to the legend this was a dragon that could breathe fire this was a dragon that could fly as well uh, so this was the classic dragon design and the king at the time uh, was so angry um, he beckoned everybody to try to fight the dragon but the dragon would always win it finally took up to the king to decide um, that he's going to hand his daughter's hand in marriage to anyone that can defeat the dragon. And it took some guy by the name of Crack, K-R-A-K, Crack, to find out what the status and how to defeat, defeat this dragon is. So many soldiers went before him, so many soldiers died. So Crack, also known as Krakus, uh, decided to play it smart. And the way the legend goes is, instead of having to fight the dragon one-on-one, -on -one, he deceived the dragon. Uh, he did this by apparently taking a, sh a sheep, killing the sheep, but stuffing the body full of sulfur. And as the body was then placed in front of the dragon's lair, which is actually a cave, um, the dragon came out, saw the easy food, and started eating it, but then the sulfur turned out to be the dragon's demise and the reason for this was because the sulfur caught fire um, and so while the dragon could of course breathe fire this was a dragon that could not handle everlasting fire within its belly so it went to the nearby river drank as much water as it could but because the sulfur was everlasting within its contents within the inside of his body it could not uh, essentially quelch that fire so it stuffed its belly so full that some legends go that the dragon burst in terms of all this water in there or another legend goes that it was so full of water that all it could do was just rest and so at that point Krakus came out and started pelting the dragon to try to encourage it to breathe fire and the, re the minute that the dragon did that it reignited the sulfur and the dragon exploded 
Now here's where the interesting part comes. Um, when Krakus did that, he was then of course handed the king's daughter in marriage, the king died, and he instead became king. And when that happened, the first thing that Krakus did was that he built his new city, his new town, right above the dragon, the slain dragon himself. So you'll see a picture of that here. According to the legend, that is the location of the actual dragon, the Wawel dragon. And the king, Krakus uh, at that time, created it right over the slain body. And again, very, very cool the notion that there is actually something there right now. Of course, legend can be make believe, legend can be false. But at the same time, you know, with regards to my videos and regards to anything, if we take an open mind approach to this, one can think that, hey, some legend has factuality within it. So the idea that there really was the founding of this city done at. Uh, the time because of the slain dragon um, if that is really true then we truly have the bones of this long lost dragon if not the bones maybe it's entombed maybe it's trapped maybe it's still alive it's down there right now within that hill itself how cool is that to imagine that on there um, there you'll see also there's this item here this is actually a fairly recent statue dedicated to the legend of the Wawel dragon it was uh, something that's actually tied to a gas mine so every couple minutes if you stand around you'll see the thing actually blow fire exactly like a dragon himself and the legend goes that it, with regards again to the city um, it's built on top of this hill and it's built over the remains of the dragon. Here's another cool picture here. Um, this is actually inside the cave. Apparently there are sections open within that hill where you can walk in and you can see the cave. So again, just like that movie, Rain of Fire. You know, hell, if somebody does the right thing or the wrong thing at the right time, uh, they might be able to actually find the bones themselves of the dragon and who knows maybe if it's still alive if it was able to reanimate itself if it was able to regrow parts the, it might just actually come about be released on its own very very cool concept again a little iffy a little far-fetched but hey the whole point of these videos is to have fun and imagine how these things could be and the idea that there could actually be a real life dragon that was here on earth because again why would this be documented within such tales if this happened at the earliest time Krakus was a real person he was actually real um, and if something like this kind of action was documented for him as recent as the founding of the city at that time um, why would it be so far-fetched uh, Truly, Krakus or anyone else associated with him would have said either A, you know, stop that. I don't want these fantastical tales to be told about me and misinterpreted. Or B, he encouraged this falsehoodness. Or C, maybe it's the real deal. So, again, um, I'm starting to think it's either a little bit of B or C on there. Because, um, again, why would these things be created at the same time that the person is actually living unless it actually happened you know think about that it's that kind of cool stuff that makes these uh, ideas of these cryptids and these weird things that are happening out there in the world seem much more cooler so anyways that's my latest cryptids and monsters video that's the legend of the wild well dragon and by the way with regards to Krakus himself he seems to have a fascination with hills um, no sooner the he died that his last request either his last request or someone else's request was that another hill will be built on top of him in this case the way he did with the dragon uh, building a hill on top of that and building the city uh, when he died he had a hill built on top of him which you'll see here so pretty cool stuff all right everybody thanks again as always take care